This is the War for Cybertron Barricade. I've heard a lot of terrible things about this figure. Are any of them true? I don't know. Let's find out. We're gonna go over the figure's design, articulation, vehicle mode, and then the transformation at the end. Now before we continue the video, the man in my attic will be extremely upset if I do not read this. I'm doing it, okay? Uh, let's see, um... This video is brought to you by FlexiSpot. Look at my desk here. It's messy, it's bad. I mean, it's my fault. But FlexiSpot sent me a new desk that's, uh, this is, uh, it's pretty cool. And it's made out of bamboo. Oh my gosh, you're tickling me. The thing's pandas eat. So it's environmentally friendly, durable, and edible. Well... Maybe not edible. This is also a standing desk. I mean, most desks are standing. Uh, let me explain. So I can either sit at my desk talking to my AI waifus, or I can raise the desk and talk to my AI waifus while standing. This one in particular has three different presets, so you can customize it to different heights. It also has dual motors to keep it stable. If any of these figures fall during the height change, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wear a maid outfit. Dang, I really wanted that maid outfit. You can customize your desks with different frames, colors, and sizes. It's a great option for people who work at home or sit at a desk all day, like me. It's also cool for displaying my collection while I work. Check them out, link in the description below. And thank you once again. I love you. Let's take a quick look at the box art. Basic artwork of Barricade over here. He's got a cute little heart. This is the second figure in these line of figures. Here's the side, other side. Quick look at the back. I mean, he doesn't look too bad from this picture, but like I said, I've heard quite a few bad things about him. I can already see the hollow legs over here. The vehicle mode doesn't look too bad so far. Kind of reminds me of a Batmobile. By the way, if you guys would like to see me play the War for Cybertron game in a video, let me know in the comments below. Now that we've opened up the figure, it's time to pause the video so I can mess around with it and get my thoughts in my head properly. So now holding this figure in my hand, I can say uh, it's not that great. He feels a bit bulky, and these pieces over here are very annoying, and I feel like they get in the way of the arms. And also, technically, I believe they should be tabbed in over there, but honestly, the connection is just way too loose, so it doesn't matter. He's also kind of back heavy. Now, let's start off by taking a closer look at the figure's head. Um, the helmet-like area looks pretty decent. Kind of reminds me of Judge Dredd. It is a fairly basic sculpt. The eyes, I think, look absolutely horrendous. That is one of the worst parts about this figure. He looks like a crying clown. On the box art, his eyes are a bit more pointy the further you go down. Over here, they seem to be a bit more round, and it doesn't really work. The rest of the face sculpt, I mean, it's it's very basic. That is kind of how his design is, so that's not really much of a complaint. Over down onto the chest piece, we got the Decepticon insignia in the middle. It looks like some of the silver paint is already already starting to come off. It's a very triangular body, and I do like these purple bits over here. Further down to the crotch section, very pointy. That is indeed a very pointy crotch piece. I am impressed by the level of edge on such a design. Shut the fuck up! Over to the arms, you can see the wheels have some detail on top of them, but overall, they do feel kind of plain. The design of the arms doesn't seem too great. It's very bulky, especially this part right over here. It looks bad. I feel like it doesn't work. And then when you get further down to the hands, you'll notice this part is kind of in the way of the hands, and I feel like that's a pretty bad design choice. Also, a lot of the joints on my copy of the figure are like really tight. Like this head is really hard to move and the joints on the hands are also pretty tight. And this being in the way kind of makes it a bit harder to move the hands. Now, as we move further down to the legs, I don't really like having this over here. It is somewhat accurate to the game. That is where the wheels are on the character model, but it still hinders the arm movement. If you wanted to, you could turn it and move it around, but now the bottom parts of the legs are bulky and it is less game accurate, but it doesn't hinder the arms as much now. Now, these parts of the legs do look game accurate. I will give it that. The feet do look pretty atrocious, but once again, this is game accurate. Now, if we turn the legs and take a look at the inside, we'll see a lot of hollow bits and it's very ugly. If you turn the figure over to the back, he has some more hollow spots in his ass. Once again, like Bumblebee, he has hollow ass syndrome. Tell me, Doc, what do I have? No, we're not doing this joke again. We get more hollow spots inside the legs over here. Turn our attention to the backpack. I don't think it looks too bad. I do like the thrusters over here. With some extra paint work, this could look a little bit better. These side pieces do seem a bit bulky. I gotta see how accurate it is with the game. Overall, at first glance, it might seem like the figure has a nice design, but when you really look into it, there's a whole lot of problems with it. Now, for a deluxe class figure, he has a pretty good size to him. Here he is with the War for Cybertron Optimus, Bumblebee. He's almost as big as the original Armada Hotshot. And here he is next to some other deluxe class figures. As you can see, he's a bit on the larger side, but definitely smaller than a Voyager class. Now, it really doesn't seem like these line of figures have been doing great so far. That Bumblebee was not the best either. The Optimus Prime, though, is really great, so make sure to check out those videos. Now, here's a quick look 
look at the backdrop, I think it looks really cool. I like the little signs over here. It makes it feel more lively. Now onto his weapon. It's got a nice sculpt to it. It looks pretty cool. Just like the others, it goes on his right arm. Just pull it off and then place this on. And there you go. Now, as far as I know, the instructions don't really say where to put the arm. It was like that with Bumblebee also. For Optimus Prime, they had a storage area for it and it wasn't in the best location. This does not fit in here, unfortunately. Oh, well. But there is weapon storage at the back of the figure. That's what this spot is for. Place this in there like that. If my hand-eye coordination doesn't fail me. There we go. Wow, how cool. We can quickly check if he is compatible with the other blasters. This one is Optimus Prime. It's really hard to get this on because of how bulky the figure is. There we go. So that does work. And then this should also work. There we go. Just for fun, it doesn't seem like you can put Optimus's hand on there. But you should be able to get Bumblebee's on there. And there we go. I am inevitable. Now for the articulation, some of the joints are tight, which is annoying, and due to the bulky nature of the figure, some of the articulation is limited. I really had a tough time getting him into any dynamic poses. So we'll start with the head. He can headbang up and down. You do get a head rotation, but it's very hard to do because of how tight it is. But a full 360 rotation is possible. I do believe it is on a ball joint. This arm can move out over there. You get a full 360 rotation. It does kind of hit this, so you just got to move it out of the way. This can hinge down and up for the transformation. Bicep rotation, an elbow bend but it doesn't even go 90 degrees. The hand can rotate, but it is difficult to do because it is on a tight joint and this piece gets in the way. And it hinders a lot of the articulation, as you can see there. You do get a 360 waist rotation. The legs can move forward. You get a knee bend, which isn't so great. The legs can move out to the side. Okay. They can move back. You get a leg rotation. No foot pivot, but it can move up and down, which also plays into the transformation. So far, this figure is very subpar. Now here is the vehicle mode. I think it looks really good and outdoes the robot mode. He does look very much like a Batmobile. Giving this figure a Batman and Batmobile customization would be really cool to see. The wheels, I do think, still look pretty plain, so that kind of sucks. Uh, this entire section back here just really protrudes out. It does seem a little bit out of place, probably is accurate to the game, but I think the mold on this is done pretty decently. You got the nice thrusters here back again. Now there is some missing paint applications over here. These should be purple, like in the game. That is unfortunate, there is missing paint. There is some nice yellow over here and more of that purple up at the top. I really do like the purple on this figure. Some neat grays all around the figure. The grays are paint and you can't see the paint coming off on my copy. Now what's really cool here is that you got the silver paint and then you get a purple outline. I think that's a really nice touch. Front of the vehicle mode you got the Decepticon insignia. I do have a bit of a smudge on my copy which kind of sucks. You got those front headlights over here in that nice purple. Then you got that very aggressive bumper up at the front which I think looks really cool. There seem to be some scratches and paint chipping over here which kind of sucks. Underneath the figure it compacts pretty nicely. There is weapon storage if I can find his weapon around. Here it is. We'll take that and just smack it up at the top and there he is with his weapon. Now the transformation on this figure is fairly simple. First let's open up his arm so that way we can rotate his hands and get it all the way in there. Snap that shut. Do the same with this one. Open it up. Turn and rotate. Snap it shut. Ooh. Let's go ahead and bring the feet up. Take this horrendous section. Rotate it like this and bring it around. Same over here. Rotate it and bring it around. Now we can rotate this 180 degrees. Bring these sections all the way up. Same here. Go ahead and do that. And let's try to tap everything into place. And then these sections need to tap into the side as well. And go ahead and push that in. There we go. Next, we're going to rotate the arms like that. Shift this part of the arms down and get it there. And then we can tap that in place. Can be kind of tricky to do. Let's suggest that. Go ahead and do the same with this side. Rotate that. Shift it in. And this part does need to tap into there. So go ahead and do that. And he looks really funny like that. He looks like he's in a cocoon or a sleeping bag. Now let's go ahead and take this section and just bring it all the way up and bring it down into place there make sure it lines up here. Same with this. Make sure it all lines up in place. Do your final adjustments. And there you have your vehicle mode. Now the transformation process on this was pretty simple. It's only 16 steps. And like I said earlier, the vehicle mode is pretty good. In the end though, I don't think I would recommend this figure unless you really want to complete your War for Cybertron collection. Check out my Robust and Bumblebee video over here. It's really cool actually. And thank you to all my patrons on Patreon.